Hi everyone, welcome to another show of the Spinners Lounge and with every show we always have a guest and obviously with each guest we just get them to come and talk a little bit more about themselves and obviously do a mix for us and share their style of music with us. So for this week I'm going to let my guests introduce themselves first, if you don't mind Tyler. Hi, I'm Tyler, um, otherwise known as Bosky. I'm a DJ, producer, and I run a record label called Fracture Recordings, based in London. Okay. And one of the reasons I kind of uh, wanted to film sort of Tyler was the, the fact that I've had the, the variety of different people feature on the show. And, you know, I think it's interesting to have someone who's actually producing records. Because we had someone in the beginning, Bill, he makes these records as well, but he doesn't have a record label. So we're interested oh, okay. to get your perspective on having a label, yeah, being a yeah, DJ yeah. producer, what is the challenges you face and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. right, Tyler, with the Spinners Lounge, what we do, we start off with the kind of questions just to kind of build up, to get to know more about you, your style of music and the journey you've been through to get to where we are today, yeah? Yep. So, first question we ask is sort of where did you grow up and kind of explain a little bit about your family background and stuff. So... Where did you sort of grow up? I grew up in uh, in the heart of Essex, actually. Okay. Um, I was born in sort of Barking and Dagenham, so it's not too far away oh, from London. Okay, um, right neck of the woods. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. cool, cool, um, cool. And then basically I, I was there for, I think, the first sort of 12 years or so, then moved out further away from London, but still in Essex. Okay. Um, basically, yep, then went from Essex up to Norwich, uh, where I went to university, which is where I really got into the, the sort of music that, that I'm producing now. Mm. Um, and yeah, the scene around there was was quite good for 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 this sort of music and and that's what brought me to here okay cool so what was you studying at university while you went to Norwich <laughs> uh, I did history okay um, <laughs> I like history history is good it's good to know the past and stuff it's cool yeah I mean it's good it's, it, it wasn't the sort of creative route that I wanted to go down but I sort of opted I suppose when I was younger I was I was keen on the academic stuff as well mm. um and and so I went down that route with my, my degree Okay. And in terms of music in like your family background, was anyone into music like in any sort of I'm sort of a first like that. I mean, um my my parents weren't into it, sort of music in in that way. I mean, I mm. sort of growing up that wasn't an influence that I had. I've just mm. always been into music myself. Um going back to sort of really being into hip hop and things growing up. Uh my my little sister's now a singer and and she's into the whole sort of West End show style of music, okay. which is the other side, but she's creative as well, so okay. that, that's good. Cool, 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 cool. Right, so the second question we ask and we sort of go through, right, is music. So now, I always say usually before it was the earliest memories of music, but then people, I don't want you to take me right back. I just want you to take me to the point of where you sort of started to understand music to the point of now, okay, I'm going to follow this style of music and I'm going to listen to this particular artist or group because this is what I like now so okay so I mean pre-house and, and pre-techno mm. um, yeah. as I mentioned previously mm. it was it was the whole hip-hop and rap side um, mm. I started off with a, a keen interest in in the US scene okay. um, the old school stuff like your Tupac and Biggie and and, and things like that really mm. I mean growing up that was my influence um, I, I got into sort of rapping myself and, and the hip-hop scene with a almost with a US sort of perspective, um, okay. before sort of a bit later discovering the London mm. grime scene and seeing that yeah. we've got it going on as well. Um, so, it's, so yeah, I guess that that would be my my earliest sort of musical um, yeah thing that I was into would be the hip hop mm. scene. Okay, so what made you take up rapping? <laughs> 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 well, and you know, I don't know. Not, just because, well, I don't know. I see depending. I'm talking about myself and anyway, back in the day, not really much of us wanted to um um take up rapping. We more took up DJing or MC. Yeah, so yeah. why rapping specifically? Again, I mean I I don't know, it was just something I've always like had a bit of a flow and, and been sort of mm. happy with a, a bit of a freestyle um and, and making mm. the tunes. During my college years actually I got access to a music mm. studio. Um so what I did was um I started actually producing uh or, or 
when I say producing, it wasn't mm. production. It was taking a an instrumental and and going in and recording myself sort of over the top of it okay. and, and things like that. Um, but I, I don't know what caused me to sort of jump into it. None of my friends were doing it. Mm. Um, I wasn't from that sort of a, a social group where we were all sort of aspiring rappers. It was yeah. just me, uh, okay. and I'm a bit like that. Like I just I just jump into things if it takes my fancy. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. So earliest memories, or well, not earliest memories. The earliest record you would have bought then would have been. <laughs> uh, it'd be uh, Jay-Z It's a Hard Not Life okay. uh, on, on cassette actually I was well young when that came out uh, I can't remember the exact year but I was still basically a kid <laughs> okay Jay-Z okay. that was, um, what was a big tune that, or the, the album or just a single it was just a single okay. actually yeah, yeah. on the cassette <laughs> alright all right, cool right so now DJing and when did the DJing come into it? And obviously, how did the transition happen between liking hip hop yeah. and then obviously going into DJing and doing like house and all this kind of stuff? Massive transition. I mean, yeah, like, like I much prefer the behind the scenes sort of focusing on making mm. the music, playing the music rather than being yeah. the front man sort of singer, mm. rap or whatever. Mm. Um, so, so basically, when I got to university is when I discovered electronic music. Um, okay. So we're talking quite late. I'm in 2007. Yeah. Um, and when I started, it was all sort of drum and bass and, and dubstep. And, and that was what I was really into in, mm. in my university days. Um, I then did a season uh, or two seasons out in Ibiza. Okay. Where I went and sort of lived out there for a few months at a time. That introduced me to sort of the house and the techno in, in the mm -hmm. best way possible. Uh, had the time of my life <laughs> two years in a row. So um, that, that, that was what transitioned me into liking that sort of the, or the music that I love now. I mean, house music. Mm. Um, I've not looked back since I got into sort of the house and, mm. and tech scene. Um, I don't even really get time to listen to many other genres now because mm. I'm always on the house music. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it was, I, I guess it was just a t waiting for it to happen. It, okay, <laughs> so uni and I'll be for kind of really yeah. a fundamental in you making that transition to sort of thinking about the DJs. Okay. Yeah. Um, so in that early, well, in those early days, obviously when you start to take it up and you like electronic music and stuff, what particular DJs, right, did you hear or listen to that you thought, okay, these are the DJs that are sort of I like at this particular time or that I mean that made you think, okay, I wanna take it up and they're quite good. Yeah, well definitely Carl Cox. Uh, okay. I mean his his parties uh, uh Carl Cox and friends at Space in Ibiza. Mm -hmm. Um they're very sort of techno heavy driven uh really really good sort of nights and and i think that when i saw carl cox play um something sort of clicked there and i was like wow like this guy's got it going on mm, um mm. and obviously coming back and doing my research because i was late to discover that you see that he's going back to the old yeah, rage scene yeah yeah he, that's Smashing what i was gonna say he's it. a legend he's <laughs> a legend because um i was just saying to someone the other day about in the beginning there was a lot of Different. You go to rave and like you would have Carl Cox, Fabio and Groove Rider, yep. Mickey Finn, Slip Matt, and they all played different styles of music. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Until yeah, you got yeah, to yeah. a point, everyone then started separating. Then it was like Carl Cox was more techno, and like you said, darker, and then Fabio and Groove yep. Rider more jungle Drummer. and breakbeat. So, yeah. yeah, it's um he's a legend anyway, definitely for the rave music in around the world. So yeah. okay. That's, I that's saw him actually smashing a like a hardcore set, uh, an old video of him from like ninety two, ninety three. Yeah. Uh, and it was like completely different music, but mm. he's still like <laughs> the same guy up yeah, there smashing yeah, it. Like, yeah, he's yeah, doing really a lot he's done a lot, especially in underground music anyway, yeah. you know what I mean? So he's definitely a bigger a bigger uh, person, a celebrity kind of or whatever figure in the in the music in this culture. Right. So right, Tyler what we do with the spinners lines, right, when anyone comes on, right, obviously we go for the DJs and stuff. So your favourite DJs, I mean, just pick three, but for they may, might be DJs that you're actually just been following in the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, maybe someone from the past, you know, but there's kind of the three DJs that kind of stick to mind. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I guess uh, number one would be sort of Sonny Fodera. Uh, okay. He's got a big sound sort of coming out. Uh, he's doing a lot of stuff on Defected at the moment. Okay. And, and he's, he pumps the Tech House bangers. Um, his tracks and his and his mixes are, are brilliant. Um, I already mentioned Carl Cox. Um, obviously, he's, he's one of my top DJs as well. Uh, a couple more. You've got, you got Jamie Jones. 
Yeah, a lot of people are talking about Jamie Jones right now. Yeah, a Jamie Jones is big. You know, he, he's been doing his, his productions are like quite simple in in mm. terms of. I'm I'm not saying they're simple like they're not produced well. They're they're excellent, mm. but his bass lines are just sort of four or eight bar loops, um, and he just pumps it through the whole track. It sounds yeah, sounds excellent. Yeah, a lot of people are definitely talking about Jamie Jones because um he's part of Hot Creations, isn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah cool. Um, one of the things I obviously want to reflect on as well I think it's important is the record label right yeah so again we've talked about the transition you made from your musical taste growing up into then DJing how did you then make the transition to becoming a producer and then obviously ultimately having your own record label what was the journey and the, what was how did it all begin so I guess like going to actually making my uh, or becoming a producer and, and DJing came from, um, so I, f I finished university and I had a lot of free time on my hands. Um, and when I was at university, I was always in with a crowd that were DJing and running their own nights. There weren't any producers in that crowd, but um, they were the connected people mm. up in that scene. Um, and I was always sort of in the DJ boxes with them, but I was never the one sort of pressing the buttons and, and, and making people happy with, with music which I really sort of have always sort of aspired to do in one way or another mm. um, so what happened when I had this sort of time on my hands and I moved in with uh, a DJ friend um, we threw this house party one night and I remember uh, it got to about five six in the morning they were all tired uh, they had some CDJs set up in the living room and they basically told me to to get up and have a go on them mm. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> um, flip forwards, I, I started sort of DJing myself using Traktor on, on my MacBook Pro. Mm -hmm. Started producing using FL Studio. I didn't have any hardware. It was just a, a rubbish old laptop mm. um, that was <laughs> really loud and really slow at making the tunes. Um, and then it's been a, a, a massive learning curve. Um, Self-taught completely. Okay. Um, That's good. Yeah. There's nothing wrong in teaching yourself something new, definitely. Yeah. But... Again, okay, so at what point when you're producing music did you say, okay, look, I'm going to produce music and now I'm actually going to think about distributing this music through my own record label? What was, what kind of, how did that work uh, come about? I guess it, it sort of happened when I was about sort of two years into the production mm -hmm. um, and I realised that I was now making a sound that I liked and other people liked mm -hmm. um, and I, I wanted, I've always wanted to be my own boss and, and it sort of stems from, <laughs> from that all, in a way. All, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, I, I basically, I, I said one day, I said, right, I'm going to teach myself mm. how, what I need to do to distribute this music to get other people mm. on board so that I can always do remixes of other people's tracks and um, they can come and do remixes of mine and, and mm. we can promote each other. Mm. Fracture Recordings was born. I think I had a, a month off between sort of jobs and I mm. used that to just literally launch Fracture Recordings got in touch with someone that's good on the branding to, to start doing the artwork, mm. used my sort of skills in, in social media and, and, and sort of, yeah, to, to, to build that brand up from the ground, put out some free releases, mm. got a distributor on board and, and, and then now we were at a stage where we could actually launch the label properly with a commercial release, which was probably about last July. Okay. Yeah, because I checked out, um, obviously, your website and I have looked at the roster and I thought, oh, okay, you've got quite a... Nice for us to start off, yep. considering you started the label last year officially, was yeah. it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay, so how did uh, how did you sort of work with the artists quickly, or how did you get to know them and find them and that kind of stuff? It's it's all all about social media. I think in this yeah. in this day and age, it's it's a really important thing um, that you can build a network on something like Facebook or SoundCloud or MixCloud or uh, Twitter. Everything is is such a powerful tool mm. uh, for you to connect with other like minded people. Yeah integrating those networks. So basically, I just reached out to people. I'd go on SoundCloud, I'd look at and, and listen to songs that I like the look of, mm. uh, sorry, uh, yeah, like the sound of, mm. um, and then basically reach out to the artists. Most of them weren't being represented by anyone else. They were struggling, finding the same sort of trouble I was finding when I was a new artist. Um, and then I managed to, I suppose, get them on board by, by saying, look, this is Fracture Recordings, this is what we're doing. Flash forward, we've got 28 artists on board. Mm. Uh, mm. We're coming it's up impressive. on our 16th, 17th release. Uh, did our first compilation this summer, and we've got another one coming in the winter. Uh, and we're now at a stage where we're reaching out to some sort of bigger artists and, and, and actually getting sort of more people on board with remixes and, and things like that, and it's growing nicely. 
cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I was impressed, obviously, when I said I saw the roster and I was like, wow, we've got a good list to, of yeah, people that's already involved in it. Like I said, <laughs> you, you've just started that. So, obviously, the future looks bright and obviously, like you said, you're going to do lots of stuff. Um, now, the sort of question I want to ask is relating to style, right? Yeah. Obviously, you're DJ, the producer, and what is your style? What's what's the style of your DJ playing uh -huh. and the style of your rec of the record label? And are the two married, or do you allow yourself as a DJ to experiment more? And does that sort of the record label have a more concrete sound, or is it reverse? Uh, it's, I, I guess I'm more eclectic in in the tracks that I'm mixing than than what I'm producing and what we're putting out on the label. With the mm. label, it's very much about having our own sound, um, yeah. and it's very hard to describe what that is. Mm -hmm. But you'll notice a consistency in the tracks that we're we're releasing. Mm -hmm. When I'm playing music, I do play a lot of sort of the unreleased stuff from the label and a lot of my tracks. So. Mm. I suppose generally, yeah, it follows a bit like the sound of the label, mm. but I also do expand and I put, I mean, you'll see from my mix a bit later on that okay. there'll be some other tracks in there that are a different style of music to what we're putting out as well. Okay. House is like a wide eclectic scene. It is, it, but uh, one of the things I've always said since I've started to do the Spinners Lounge and it's something that I've always longed uh, had in my mind is that there's too many genres in house because uh, <laughs> the last episode or last show of the spinners lounge those guys skbz from hastings they're more into g house oh yeah yeah, and, yeah you know i've never not to say i've never heard of g house but it's kind of okay g house what's so different of deep house what's so different of sofa house what's so different tech house you know what i mean yeah. so it's so much and i just i said to someone the other day uh, for me i'm going back to the days when you just call it dance music because yeah, at the end yeah. of the day when you go out to a club or a rave you just the whole idea was to dance, yeah. you know, like Completely you might go it. to hip hop rave and get people who are right into their dancing, but you know, like you get the others who are just there, just listening to yeah. the music, but hip you're not it. dancing. <laughs> dance music is completely different. Yeah. I've always said, I think it's you're meant to dance, let go. That's part of the culture, letting go of yourself. Definitely, just what I'm saying, regardless of it. So, okay, cool. Um, really, we've come to towards the end, took obviously because we got to do your mix, yeah, yeah. Um, Oh no! I tell you what, um, your technology and mixing. Yes. Did you start off? Because I, I don't know. Most people, especially nowadays, anyway, everyone starts on controllers. So decks are alien, uh, pitch and needles. All of that is not really part of it. Did you start off on controllers, or did you have an experience using sort of? Uh, vinyl decks. I've never actually. Uh, it's quite embarrassing. I'm. I've not. I've not been on the vinyl decks actually. Um, my my old housemate had had some set up as well, okay. and, and I really should have like using that yeah. used that opportunity to get on the vinyls. I have been on CDJs and, and I do enjoy it. Mm. Um, but when I started, and I suppose it, it sort of guided me throughout, is I started on a controller myself. I yeah. um, started on Tractor without a controller, actually, on my laptop, but you can't get much done when you're clicking no, with a mouse. No, you can't. You can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't, you can't make can't, very can't, intricate can't, mixing. You, you definitely um, need a controller for Tractor. Or definitely. Or DJ one of them, because it's pointless when you start doing all that. Nah, yeah. nah you need a controller. Okay, cool. Um, I, I bought, um, I remember buying like a 30 quid little uh, little controller yeah that's uh, the one i've got something similar this thin is it yeah i think mine's new mark yeah know. that's the one yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, the one yeah. and and again you've got really no options with you can yeah. between the tracks <laughs> but you can't really do much else uh eventually i bought the s4 which you'll you'll see in my mix yeah. um brilliant piece of kit mate brilliant okay. with with tractor and yeah for getting the transitions between mixes really spot on no oh, cool listen tyler it's been a pleasure obviously speaking to you and i'm looking forward to see what you're going to play are you um just quickly, quick question about your mix. Are you going to throw in some of the stuff from your record label? Yeah, I've got uh, I've got an exclusive. Um, well, I've got a couple of bits from the record label. Okay, cool. uh, A couple of tracks. One of them is going to be a free release that's coming out next month or, or late this month, actually. Okay. Uh, I've got a track that I'm working on with a guy called Mori, um, which is we're going to send that out to some bigger labels. So it's okay. a pretty big exclusive. I'm, I'm quite happy with that one. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm looking forward to it now. So <laughs> cool. Um, right, with this last seg uh, segment of the Spinners Lines interviews, basically, I just I always tell people now to sell yourself, yep. tell people where they can find and follow you in terms cool. of your social media and your music, where it's um, your mixes and music for the record label as well. Yep. So 
take it away and just tell them everything where they can find cool. you and your record label. So basically, I mean, you can find my personal stuff at soundcloud.com forward slash Get Bosky. Um, my, my username on pretty much all social media is Get Bosky. That's G-E-T-B-O-S-K-I. Find me on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Periscope. I do a lot of Periscope mixes. Okay, cool, uh, which cool, Which is a cool. new thing that's, uh, that I'll, I find okay. really we use, well, We're going to use Meerkat. As well, because yeah, uh, it's a similar thing. It's similar, but um, I, I don't know. Periscope, I, I don't know. I'm torn between the two, but Meerk- Meerkat has more options in terms of what I can do. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's why I've gone with it specifically. But okay, that's Periscope, cool. cool. Um, and then the record labels Fracture Recordings. So you can find us SoundCloud.com forward slash Fracture Recordings. The website actually has got all of the info and, and mm. the blog which is fracturerecordings.co.uk. Uh, you can find out about me and the other artists on the label through, mm. through there. Mm, definitely. That's, um, it's got, uh, like I said, 28 artists on the record Yeah, 28. Label. I mean, we've, yeah. we've signed a couple more since then, but I mean, okay. in terms of what we've put out releases, there's 28 yeah. artists there. Cool. London bound, uh, London based. We've got some people based up north in the Midlands. Got a guy out in Spain, a guy out in Australia, mm. um, making the same sort of music. So we, cool. we got them on board. There you go, people. So go and check out Fracture Recordings. Uh, go and check out Get Bosky. And also check out his mix session. That's going to be... The link will be in the video below. So, guys, once again, thank you for watching. And peace. Cool.